we've been involved in India for a number of years, starting uh, back in the 1950s and 60s, where we partnered with the government to work on agricultural productivity, which led to the Green Revolution. Recently, we've been focusing on a few areas in India. So one of them has been on the whole concept of urban resilience. We started off focusing on climate change resilience in cities like Surat, Indore, uh, and Gorapur, and now we're expanding it with a global initiative on 100 resilient cities where we've added Bangalore and Chennai. So that's one area that we've been focusing on. We've also been focusing on our global work on health for universal health coverage where India has been a real leader in introducing new models in the states and being part of what we call the joint learning network where we're helping countries exchange ideas to bring health insurance and protect uh, the poorest people from having these disastrous financial shocks when they do have face a health problem. Uh, and we've also been doing some work on impact investing. So how do we catalyze social entrepreneurship through this new field that we started, uh, help start and build momentum around impact investing, which has really taken off quite well in India. Most recently, and why we're here today, is for this very exciting new initiative on rural electrification. We know that energy poverty is a huge problem. Uh, there's a billion people globally who don't have access to electricity and 300 million in India itself. And we believe we've come up with a very innovative model that is a market-based solution for how we can bring energy into a rural village through a business, uh, serve multiple needs including lighting in households, serving large anchor clients like telecom towers or ATM machines, but also importantly serve productive loads and new enterprises. And this is a real opportunity for entrepreneurship in villages. It's a really large number, so it's hard to even answer that question. And the social entrepreneurs that we've uh, supported range. In this particular initiative on uh, smart power for rural development, we are supporting entrepreneurs who are focused on building energy service companies and ESCOs, and we're helping them scale up. But even down to individuals, like a carpenter in one of these villages, where they're currently powering their lathe with a diesel generator, and we're converting them over to some of the clean power that we're now providing, helping them scale up their business so that they can hire people, expand their products, and earn more income. And that's something that we're very excited about for the Smart Power for Rural Development initiative is the entrepreneurial opportunities that will create when people have access to power will be tremendous. Well, as part of this initiative, we and our partners plan to provide a range of services. So one range of services will be training and capacity building. So how do we encourage people to think about becoming entrepreneurs and how can they plan to start their businesses? And this will also be particularly important for women. We have a very strong gender focus in this initiative and that will be an important part of it. Another important part will be providing some of the financing. So we're in conversations with lots of people who want to fund entrepreneurs but just don't know exactly where to find them. And so a lot of the impact investors and others who support microenterprises are interested to partner with us so that when we bring electricity to a village, all of a sudden there's new opportunities. So those are really sort of the two big categories of support that I expect we'll be providing. On the one hand, the training and capacity building, and on the other hand, some of the initial capital to help them get going. Well, the trend's been very interesting. I'm not an expert, but from what I've seen is that there's really a stronger confluence between, you know, there were some for-profit models in business and then people who were just doing things in a grant-funded way. And more and more, there's models that are proving to be quite profitable. So particularly with private schools, uh, all the lessons that we've learned with healthcare. So there's certain sectors that people are getting very creative about starting up uh, their businesses and social entrepreneurship. So we see it as a really growing trend. Now what's increasingly interesting to me is large companies are seeing the potential for social entrepreneurs to be partners, to help them address social issues, but also to be a source of innovation as well. So what we're starting to notice is as the social entrepreneur space is maturing, not only are the social entrepreneurs themselves growing, but they're becoming more and more part of the e broader ecosystem and finding ways to partner with large companies. Well, there's lots of ideas that people have about some of the businesses. So one will be just enhancing 
what is already happening, the current entrepreneurial activity. And this can be a farmer who all of a sudden now can irrigate uh, their farms in a different way uh, to new areas. So people who start a small infotainment center where people can access the internet, download some movies, and do a little bit of work as well. Uh, there's also interesting models for artisanal producers, so women's groups that produce cultural goods that can then get sold when they have access to electrical tools, they can be much more productive. So there really is a wide and exciting range.